All right, Peggy's here to bother me, so we can skip through that. And you guys are arguing. And now something has changed again. It was late, but someone was knocking on my door. Ashley? Hey, Malia! I had a long night tonight. Oscar made me stay late to help clean up. Can I come in for a bit? Of course you can. We talked to each other about our days as we snuggled beneath a thin cotton blanket. But that devolved into a tickle fight, which then devolved into something else entirely. Ah. You know, I never pegged you as a freaky one. Ha! Huh. Shows what you know. We had a great night. It sounded pretty great with just the, like, talking about your day stuff. That was pretty cute. But you can never keep your clothes on for long, can you, Malia? <laughs> Uh, taxes. Alright, now we're gonna go to the beach. So things are gonna get bad after that, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. We don't have to do this thing because she's not actually there. Um, but we can do this because we haven't actually talked to Mark and Ashley yet, so let's do that and see what happens. I made my way over to them. What are you two up to? Malia, this is wonderful. Two of my favorite people in the same place. Mark, we're always in the same place. We live in the same building. Yes, but now you are all to myself. It makes me so happy. Do you want to play a game? I guess. Let's play truth or dare. What do you think, Ashley? Truth or dare? Um, truth then. Truth. Okay, I have to ask you something embarrassing. Hmm. When was the last time you wet yourself? What? You have one chance to get her to tell the truth. Anything you want, any naughty thing. And you ask her when she last peed her pants? Of course, it is embarrassing. So she must speak or change to a dare she is afraid. That's not juicy at all. She probably last peed herself when she was a kid, like the rest of us. I... Laughing too hard at a comedy show last fall. Uh. Never speak of this again. I'm not even going to think about this again. And I'm with her. <laughs> well, there they go! And now it's time for our beach date. So let's see what you have in store for me, Ashley. <laughs> Ready, Malia? I shook my head vigorously. Ashley had a dark gleam in her eye, and she was grinning like a homicidal maniac. Too bad! She threw the volleyball into the air and jumped. And spiked it straight into the ground next to me, creating a small crater. I blinked in the emerging dust. Can you even do that? <laughs> you come the way I play. It's your turn, Malia. Fine. If that's the case, I won't lose. Ashley and I played against each other for hours. And I mean, hours. We weren't even keeping score was the thing. Take this! Ha! Back at you! Ah! But Ashley and I both had violently competitive streaks. Who knew that behind that sweet, smiling face lay the heart of a demon just waiting to rip your heart to shreds? Uh-huh. Let's go again! You're on! Um... Guys? Jihyo, look out! Oh, no. Jihyo lay sprawled on the sand, one arm over her head in a soap opera-esque pose. Normally I would have laughed, but... Jihyo! Wake up! Jihyo blinked and stared straight ahead of her. Why did you do that? Are you okay? Thank God you're okay. Ashley hugged Jihyo, but Jihyo pushed her away. Why do you always have to be like this, Ashley? Wh what I glanced between Ashley and Jihyo, sensing an odd tension between them. Why can't you ever just enjoy the moment without having to be the best? You never think about... 
Ashley looked pointedly at me and Jihyo sighed. What's that all about? <sighs> Whatever. We're getting ready to eat now. You two can come if you want. Jihyo left, wobbling slightly as she regained her balance. I held Ashley to her feet. What was that about? Huh. Jihyo and I... Uh, right before Brendan and I dated, we might have had a fling. You what? Yeah, weird, right? But it ended quickly. Jiho sees through people much faster than I ever did. She saw through me, too. What are you talking about? Huh. <sighs> Ashley sat, patting the sand next to her. I settled in beside her. Well... Maybe you've noticed this a little, but I have a tendency to overcompensate. I can be too nice to people and... No, really? Ashley glared at me, so I let her continue. Point being, I guess it all comes down to the fact that I... I feel like I'm not good enough. That's the crux of it. So I try to be really nice, and I try to do a lot for people, and I try to be good at everything. I want everybody to like me. I want to be friends with everyone. I want to feel like everybody's attracted to me. I'm... greedy. So it's not surprising that I ended up with a guy like Brendan. Or that Jihyo got sick of me. <laughs> Who else have you dated? Uh, I feel like that's uh, not really the issue here. Of course you're good enough. I wrapped an arm around her shoulders, not really sure what to do or say. You know you're good enough. You know you're enough for me, right? Yeah, I know. Obviously. I mean, you're dating me, so I must be, right? <laughs> she laughed half-heartedly. Anyway, there's nothing you can do about it, and I don't want to talk about it more, but... It's something I need to confront within myself. Do you think you can be there for me as I do this? Of course I will be. I care about you. If I can help you at all, I will. Thanks. She smiled and kissed me lightly. With you there to remind me that I matter, I think I can do it. You're like evidence, you know? Anytime I get down on myself, I just have to look you in the eyes and remember... Malia cares about me. Then I can get back up and keep fighting the good fight. <laughs> fighting the good fight? Well, I'm on your side. Ashley beamed and stood and held her hand out to me. Ready to go eat? Definitely. I'm starving. We headed inside, hand in hand. As long as we were both together, we could do anything. That's the hope. So she opened up to us about not feeling good enough, and so she overcompensates. Interesting. Alright, and now here's the rub of it. I think Ashley was actually there to scold us. Was I mistaken? Hmm. I thought I saw her, but maybe not. Okay. Well, let's see what happens when we're the ones in the firing range. <laughs> Still, I couldn't just give up. Ashley, please, I need to talk to you. Can we go? Without a word, she turned on her heel and headed out of the room, leaving the others behind. She was there. So she's like, I can't believe you did this. A wave of relief washed over me. I often thought that Ashley was too forgiving, but this time it was going to work in my favor. I followed her out of the room, expecting her to find a corner for us to talk in, but to my surprise, she kept walking. I was like, wait, did I misread that? But no, Molly, I misread it. <laughs> Ashley? She stepped up the staircase without bothering to look at me. I followed her in a rush. Ashley, are you going to talk to me? By the time I reached the top of the stairs, a door slammed. Ashley was in her room, and it didn't seem like she was coming out. Ashley? Please, will you talk to me? I can explain everything. 
I was met with only silence. Well, okay. I'll explain now. I don't know how any of it happened, but I swear I'm innocent. I would never betray everyone here, certainly not for a lousy hundred pounds I didn't even need. The camera footage is from when the register broke and I had to... Malia, I am going to say this nicely. Please stop being belligerent and leave me alone. Well, dang! W what If you insist on continuing to bother me, I'll have to call James or Angelo to get you away from my door. This is stalking or harassment or something. But, but I... I just want a chance to explain. No, leave now. There's nothing else I could do. I certainly couldn't knock her door down to make her face me, coward. Okay, I'm leaving. I'll be in my room if you want to talk. I waited to hear some kind of response, but heard nothing. Really, she was going to sick Angie on me? Dang. Finally, I headed back to my room and sat on my bed, staring at the wall in front of me. What was I going to do now? I didn't have a job. I probably didn't have any friends. I might not even have a place to live soon. A hundred thoughts swirled through my mind and I was exhausted. There was no point in staying up. I got ready for bed. I was about to turn off the light when I heard something that sounded like a loose leaf of paper. Puzzled, I glanced around the room until I realized a paper had been slid under my doorway. I picked it up. A short note was written in Ashley's handwriting. Malia, you used to say I let people take advantage of me, because I always give everyone a chance. I don't want to judge anyone too quickly, even if that means that sometimes I get hurt. But I've always thought that when someone shows you who they really are, you should believe them. I can't pretend this didn't happen. Whatever your reasons, you did what you did, and I can't support that. I'd like us to still be polite to each other, but that's the end of it. Please don't ask me for anything more. Ashley. So... You'll defend piece of crap Brendan, the douche canoe. But there's circumstantial evidence about me, and you're like, I don't even know who you are, girl. Okay. I'm I'm so I hate this this whole plot line. It just makes me lose faith in all humanity. <laughs> I folded up the letter, feeling tears prick my eyes. Screw this, screw all of this. I was going to sleep. I flipped off the light and crawled into the covers, hoping things would look better in the morning. I'd always been afraid that Ashley didn't know how to protect herself. Now I was afraid she might protect herself too well. <sighs> Alright. Well, hi, friends. Things are going good. I've been good? Really great. You know? <laughs> I entered the kitchen for breakfast that morning and stopped dead in my tracks. Uh, Ashley. Oh, good morning, Malia. Good morning. Ashley went back to her meal after greeting me as if nothing were amiss. I cooked some eggs, feeling horrendously awkward. When they were done, I put them on my plate and awkwardly glanced around the room. It's fine. You can sit here. I'm done anyways. Oh. Thank you. I sat down as Ashley rose and cleaned up her dishes. Within minutes, she left the room. I guess that was that. I guess I'm going back to... dealing with things. Uh, yeah, was, mm -hmm. I'm surprised Brendan didn't actually, like, snicker at us. I would have thought he would have had more of a role in this because he was so disgusted with us. But... I will just try to understand. I hadn't been back to the Crafty Crown since everything fell apart. It was the closest pub to the hostel, and thus a convenient place to hang out and unwind. But now that I had lost my job, I felt bad about spending too much money on nights out. Of course, since I had lost my job, I did have a lot of extra time on my hands. 
The other issue with visiting the Crafty Crown was the people that worked here. Hi. Um, am I allowed to be here? Ashley shrugged at me, her face blank. You haven't been banned. You are allowed to be a customer here if you want. Well, she was speaking to me, but I might have preferred the silent treatment. At least then I would know she felt something. When I looked at her now, all I saw was emptiness. Hey, why don't you pull up a chair over here? It'll be like old times. You can tell me all about how unreasonable she's being. I'll believe you. Ashley turned her head away, pretending not to pay attention. Hmm. You know. I'm gonna save. Ashley does overhear stuff. Um. Uh, drinks. I need. <laughs> um. I. I'm thinking. We don't want to be like Brendan, because Brendan just has been bad mouthing her since the beginning. She might overhear us if he would listen to us, but I'm not sure that's. Like, we don't want to be in the same boat as Brendan ever. And I don't like Brendan anyway. <laughs> Just give me my drink and let me be on my way. I came here for a drink. Vodka cranberry, right? No. Huh? I bypassed Brendan and headed to Ashley's side of the bar. You don't make me any kind of drink, sir. She looked back at me, wary but not protesting. I'd like a cosmopolitan. Or anything else you'd like to make me, because I know if you do it, you'll do it well. But I don't want to force you to be nice to me. If this is too awkward, tell me, and I'll go. It's... it's fine. She bit her lip and swallowed visibly, then reset her face to a blank mask as she put my drink together. Here you go. Thank you. I tipped her. Not a huge amount, not like I was trying to bribe her, just to be nice. And she made a tiny perfunctory smile. Was this what it meant to be in a... What it meant to be adult about something? <laughs> to feel completely miserable and keep quiet about it? Yes. You got it, girl. I was on my way out for a walk when... Ashley! Are you alright? She stared at me for a moment, then her face crumpled and her hands flew up to hide her eyes. A crying Ashley. Elbows out, she pushed past me and into the hostel. Well, never mind then. I couldn't tell if it was my fault she was upset, or something else was bothering her, but I hated not being able to help. It was pretty clear that she didn't want me around. This is just going swimmingly. Maybe you can't get a good ending with Ashley. I don't know. Oh. It's Peggy and Danny. Hair. You guys can have your your fling, it's okay. I'll let you I'll let you do that. When I came into the kitchen to make myself a sandwich, I noticed that a lot of dishes were sitting in the drainer. Ashley? They appeared to be dry, and I had nothing better to do, so I started putting them away. To my surprise, Ashley walked into the room. She stopped staring at me. I'd barely seen her in the past few days. When we did encounter each other, she made only the bare minimum of conversation necessary to maintain civility. Technically polite, but giving absolutely nothing away. My relationships with most of the rest of the hostel were mending, or at least starting to. Ashley was the obvious holdout, but there seemed to be nothing I could do about it. I certainly couldn't force her to talk to me. Really? Everybody else is starting to believe me, even Peggy. And you're the last holdout. She pressed her lips together. Hand me the cutlery. I'll put them away. You don't have to help me. I know. Then, why are you? Why are you doing this? 
Did you think I would be impressed? No, I didn't even know you were here. So why, then? Well, someone had to do it, and I guess I just wanted to help. Oh. She just forgotten, like, all the times we helped her with, like, doing dishes and cleaning up and stuff. Was that... Did she just, like, completely block that out? Ashley? I passed her the silverware and she began to slide it into the drawer. It was more of a conversation than we'd had in weeks. Th did this mean she was finally ready to listen to me? Did I have a chance to win her back? Come on, Molly, I think. Find a way to make your case. All you have to do is... What was that? I stole a quick glance at Ashley and froze with shock. You're crying! Ashley blinked at me through watery eyes, covering her face with her hand. Why are you crying? Oh god, what's wrong? Are you hurt? What happened? Uh, of course I'm hurt! You hurt me, stupid! Ash, I'm so, so sorry. I wanted to make things better, but you didn't want to talk to me, and... I still don't want to talk to you! I want to hate you, but I can't! It just won't stop, and that makes me really want to hate you! As hard as I try, I c can't I, I st still love you, and it's the worst feeling in the world! Ash. I hesitantly put my arms around her, almost afraid to touch her skin. Please, just listen for a moment. I've been trying to tell you this for so long. I didn't betray you. I was framed. I didn't do it. I know you may not believe me, but I would never do that to the hostel. I didn't need that money, and I would never have risked losing my place to live. I would never have wanted to risk losing you. Ashley sniffled. Her words were incoherent, punctuated by gasps for air. When... When Brandon betrayed me, at least I knew it was over and I'd been silly, and... I didn't have to feel that way about him anymore. It hurt, but... I can move on because... Because I never loved him like I love you. If you're a thief and I love you, how can I ever make it stop hurting? And if you're not a thief, then I've been awful, and... How do I make that stop hurting? You keep being so nice and I just can't. I can't! I hugged her tighter, rubbing her back for comfort. It was an instinct I couldn't resist. How about... Can't we just move on? Start over? What? Forget about what you might have done, or I might have done. Put everything that happened behind us and give us a second chance? How do I know you're not taking advantage of me? Well, I guess you can never know for sure, but... Like you said before, sometimes it's better to take the chance. So the bad, thing bad things in life don't keep you away from the good? <laughs> Ashley laughed, although it didn't sound that much different from the crying. You listened. And if you're not sure, I promise you can watch me as closely as you like just to be sure I never do anything wrong. Oh, Malia. She rubbed her cheek against my shoulder, wiping away the tears. Does this mean we're dating again? Can we go out again? Like to that movie we were talking about before? Yes, yes, all of the things. And... Is it okay if I kiss you? Definitely. With her back, I felt like I was on top of the world. I could do anything! Even if she didn't quite... Tr Trust me or believe my story. Shout out to Danny for believing me. <laughs> oh, Danny's still the best when it comes to the scene. Angie's second best because he was just being dumb. Someone was knocking on my door. Malia, are you free? I brought tea and biscuits for a study break. Biscuits? I looked at the plate of sandwich cookies for a moment in confusion before remembering. England! Right! Thank you! 
Hey, Ash. I know the British call cookies biscuits, but do you guys ever eat American-style biscuits? Well, what's an American biscuit? Like... biscuits and gravy. Oh, that gave me the most horrible mental image of chocolate digesters covered in bovril. I have no idea what you just said. You've never had a chocolate digestive? Oh, those are so good. Good! It was disgusting! So, what is an American biscuit like by itself? It's like an English muffin. Um, bready, buttery, not too big, usually round. A bap? A scone? Never mind. I'll just have to get you some if you're ever in America. Or you could bake me some! Maybe after exams are over. It was such a relief having things back to normal between us. <laughs> Chocolate digestives and bovril. Ew.